take a breath. That was part A. It's a, it's a messy looking identity, but the whole part of getting this out of our two applications of De Marvel's theorem is because it allows us to tackle part B. So uh, let's, let's bring that back into view. Here it is. Here's part B. Hence, oops, it is, I didn't mean to rotate that. I meant to make it a bit bigger and easier to read. Hence, solve the equation. 16 5 theta equals sine 5 theta um, for this particular domain. Okay, so now we're going back into um, trigonometric equation solution land, right? But how, how do we do this? Um, well, you can see here that I have a result for um, sine 5 theta right here from part A, right? So I can substitute in, instead of sine 5 theta, sine to the power of 5 theta, I should say, I'm going to write in all of this instead, right? So I can say, um, from part A, I'm going to simply substitute in, instead of writing um, uh, 16 sine to the power of 5 theta, I'm going to say 16 times this because this is equivalent to um, sine to the power of 5 theta. So I'm, I'm multiplying by this and that is equal to 16 sine, uh, sorry, I'm reading the wrong line. Uh, that's equal to sine of 5 theta. So you can see what I've done here. Um, this is the 16 I've gotten from here. In fact, I'll do some lines here. Uh, this is what I've got for this result. Why did I choose that color? Uh, that's what I got from there. The 16 goes to the 16. Uh, you can see this sine to the power of 5 theta has become this result here, um, which is everything you can see there. And then, uh, for good measure, uh, this guy over here is the sine 5 theta on both sides. And I'm solving for 0 to 2 pi. Now, you might say, that looks a lot worse. <laughs> um, this clearly looks more complicated than this, but you can see some stuff is going to cancel, isn't it? For starters, um, those 16s are going to cancel, so that leaves me with just this. Uh, that's going to be equal to, on the right-hand side, sine of 5 theta. And uh, second, you can see I've got a sine 5 theta on the left, a sine 5 theta on the right, so those are going to cancel, so that leaves me with uh, just this this will equal, in fact, zero. Um, I can go even further. I can subtract uh, five from both sides here. So, uh, not subtract, I can divide both sides by five. So that gives me with sine three theta out the front and then uh, minus two sine theta in the back. That's all equal to zero. Now at this point here, um, I can do one of two things, right? I can say, oh, well I can, um, sorry, let me take that back. You do a lot more than two things, but there are two things that in my mind will be useful. Um, the first thing is you might think, okay, well I can, um, I can add two sine theta both sides. That makes it look nice and neat. I can say sine three theta equals two sine theta. Um, and this is going to be really useful for me later on because I have a really good sense of what sine three theta and two sine theta, what they actually look like. So I'm going to use that as sort of an error checking method for me later on. But for now, actually keeping everything on the left hand side and having it equal to zero is advantageous to me because if you look closely here, sine three theta, I, I know what sine three theta is in simpler terms that will allow me to simplify what's going on here. If you go back to part A, you can see right here, I got this result for sine three theta. It's equal to three sine theta minus four sine cubed theta. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this and substitute it for the sine three theta that I have on the left hand side. So this is from equation two. Um, I can say that's minus two sine theta, and the brilliance of doing this is I now have, even though it's a bit messy, I have an equation that is entirely in terms of sine theta. So it is very easy to deal with once I sort of do some collecting of like terms and also some factorization. So let's have a go. Um, I've got these uh, like terms that you can see here that are sine theta and another sine theta there. There's three take away two, which is just one, last I checked. Um, and then you've got more minus four sine cubed theta, that's all equal to zero. I can do a factorization out of sine theta, that's the common factor. So that leaves me with sine theta out the front, one minus four sine squared theta, and that's equal to zero. So I have a product, it's equal to zero, um, and this will be true if either of the factors in the product are equal to zero themselves. So let's do each of those separately. 
Um, let's let's carry this guy over here. So if I deal with sine theta equals zero, um, this is really easy. In the given domain, not to two pi, which is our standard domain that we're quite used to dealing with, um, the solutions that I'm interested in for sine theta will be naught pi and 2 pi. Um, and if you're wondering how I got that so fast, I have a very basic sine theta curve in my head and I'm looking for these solutions here. That was the whole point of having it all equal to zero. Um, you're just finding the x or the theta intercepts in this case and they come in at the start, in the middle and at the end of the standard domain. So naught pi and 2 pi. Then when we have a look over at, uh, at this part over here, um, in order to make uh, 1 minus 4 sine squared theta, in order to make that equal to 0, um, you can see I can do a bit of simplification here. I can uh, subtract 1 from both sides and also multiply both sides by negative 1 in one hit. Hopefully you're comfortable with doing that. I'll now divide both sides by 4, which gives me that. And a quarter is just uh, the square it's the square of a half. So I'm getting plus or minus a half on the right hand side here. Now that plus or minus uh, is actually, even though it looks like it's messier, it's actually really easy because you know we usually think of trying to work out quadrants and that kind of thing. You're like, oh, um, sine is positive in quadrant one and two and sine is negative in quadrants three and four. Well, because I've got plus or minus here, uh, you just get all of the quadrants. So I'm gonna get a quadrant one, two, three, and a four answer. So therefore theta is going to be equal to First quadrant answer for sine theta equals a half is just pi on six. Um, your next one is gonna be pi, take away that base angle, so that'd be five pi on six. Your next one will be seven pi on six, because that's pi plus your base angle. And then lastly, two pi minus your base angle will be 11 pi on six. So, um, I've got, count them up, uh, not one, not two, not three, but in fact, together, seven answers. So I should conclude by saying, therefore, theta equals naught, pi, two pi, and also um, I've got these guys over here. You know, to be really neat, I probably should have put them in some kind of like ascending or descending order, but you know what? Uh, I think we've done enough work that that's sufficient. So this thing has seven solutions. That's a bit weird, but it actually shouldn't surprise us all that much when we go back to this idea up here and think about what this is going to look like visually. Um, before we actually graph this, have a think about um, what these two things are going to look like. If you think about two sine theta, um, it's a regular sine curve, but it's been, uh, its amplitude has been increased to two. And then sine three theta, um, it's like the same sine theta function, but it's much more frequent. It's triple as frequent. You're gonna get three copies of the entire period from naught to two pi. So because of that frequency and that change of amplitude, uh, let's see if we get what's matching here, these, um, these seven solutions. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull up uh, Desmos over here. And I've got these two functions in mind. So I'm gonna go, uh, let's see here, hopefully we can make this nice and clear. And I'm gonna put this in terms of uh, pi as well, since I'm doing this in radians. All right, so let's have a look. Um, I want in the first instance, sine of three uh, x on the uh, left-hand side. I don't want all of it, I want to restrict it from naught to two pi. Okay, there we go. So you can quickly see there, um, as we were anticipating before, I've got my three copies of uh, sine x happening. You've got the, the up down, and then you have it two more times as you reach two pi. So there's the first one. Um, and then I might make this a bit bigger this way. I think that'll do. My next one is, uh, again, I want this between uh, naught and two pi so that it graphs the correct section for me. Uh, if I go back here, I want to graph uh, this increased amplitude version. So it's going to be two sine uh, x instead of theta just to make it easier for Desmos to handle it. So two sine x and then I close uh, my brackets in here. So this is a bit uh, squishy and difficult to read. So let's just make this a little bit bigger. All right, what are we getting here? Well, um, these solutions to this equation, sine 3x equals 2 sine x, are the points of intersection. And what we can see really quickly is the two sets of solutions that I found independently from each of the factors. Um, here is the first one, there's naught and then pi and then 2 pi, which are coming up in the, you know, uh, beginning, middle, and end. And then I've got four more solutions that I'm anticipating. So here comes pi on 6, 5 pi on 6, 
there's another point of intersection down there at seven pi on six, and then the last one, 11 pi on six. So sure enough, seven solutions, a little bit strange, but it comes exactly out of the equations and the identities that we used.